All right, everyone, I want to welcome you to the AdCast. Today, I have a special person with me. You guys hear me say that so many times, but I have the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Ken Hardison. And Terry, if you could give him a round of applause there for me, please. We have Mr. Ken Hardison. He is the founder of Pilma. And uh, if you've been under a rock, I'm telling you, man, uh, you you should know exactly uh, what Pilma is, who Ken Hardison is, and actually how he's helped a lot of law firms across the country. So if you are seeing those television ads on television, probably a good chance is they probably are a Pilma member, right, Ken? Could be. It could, could be. be. <laughs> so I'm going to give some bullet points here about Ken. He's a founding member of Pilma. He's a speaker. He's an author. He's a law firm builder and an entrepreneur. Uh, and like I said, he is the founder of Pilma. But Ken, uh, for those folks who don't know you or, or they're not familiar with you, uh, g- give them a little insight on who Ken Hardison is for me. For me. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. I want to start. That's a great question. Who am I? No, I mean I, I grew up in a uh, very poor in a small in a small town in North Carolina with about ten thousand people in it, and uh, uh, you know pretty much had to work my way through school in law school. Got out, joined a firm, uh, stayed there, built up a really good little business without really doing any marketing, just yellow pages, mm-hmm. and. Uh, this is what happened. So I got out of law school in 82. And so I, I, I went with this firm. Uh, they made me a partner like two years out of law school, which is unheard of. It was the oldest, wow. law, firm, oldest law firm in my town. But I was a hustler. Um, and they, they wanted me. And uh, and I built a good book of business. I mean, we, uh, small town, but we had a, I was doing right good, really. I was doing, I was comfortable. But uh, never satisfied, comfortable, but not satisfied. Not and then, uh, so in like 90, business grew slowly, 5, 10% every year. And then in 94, it kind of evened out. 95, I saw it dip a little bit. I said, what the heck's going on? Uh, you know, I'm a better lawyer. I'm getting better results. More people know me. And then I went to court one day because I used to do kind of a general practice to start with. And I was doing a DWI. Right. And I walked in the courtroom, and here, let's call him Joe. My client kept walking in on crutches. And I said, well, Joe, what happened? Oh, I got T-boned by a transfer truck. I said, well, you know, I handled those cases. He said, yeah, but I heard this guy off TV. I figured if he's on TV, he must really be good. Wow. And I just, my heart just sucked in my stomach because that's a million-dollar case. I mean, no doubt about it, at least, at least a half a million. So I go try his DWI. I win it. I go back to the office, and I tell the guys, I said, listen, um, we got to change with the times. And they said, uh, my two partners said, nah, it's unprofessional. We're not going to market. So I, I tried, I stayed about six months and uh, they they wouldn't change. And so I left, took an associate and three staff and uh, really didn't know a lot about anything about marketing. And I went out and with everything I could do, read every book, with every conference, they had nothing to do about law firms. Just marketing. I went around to what I thought were the big, the big lawyers like John Morgan, Ken, uh, some of the big hitters across the country, and I, and I just say, can I go just spend a day or two with you? And I just got in my car and drove down there, uh, spent a couple of days, picked their brains, and they were very, uh, very forthcoming. Uh, mm-hmm. Unlike your competition, they're not going to tell you anything, right? Yeah. They're going to say, oh, uh, TV don't work. No. So then I, I, I went out and I borrowed as much as I could borrow. I, I took every bit of my assets and got a half a million dollars out of credit. And I went on TV. And this is like 97. And I went from signing up 20 cases a month to 120 cases a month in like 90 days. Now, you can't do that oh. now. That's not going to happen today. You know? yeah. but, but back then, it was not a saturated market. And, and the biggest problem I had was I was overwhelmed. I didn't have the infrastructure. And uh, so then I read this book called uh, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber about systems processes. I went out and hired this lady that was really, I'd say, my secret weapon. She got me organized. We cut off the ads for a couple months. We got organized. And we took it from the next five years to 13 lawyers, 47 staff. And uh, in about five years, 
I mean, we could have screwed like wildfire. And uh, I ended up selling out in 2010. Uh, I went through a breakup with one of my partners. I had a little, you know, that was always fun. And I don't know, I just woke up one morning and I said, you know, I want to do something else. You know, I built this up pretty good. It was doing, you know, uh, multi-million dollar business. I was making, it won't, I won't make money. I was just, I, I'm just a guy that I got to be challenged. And I, I like to, I like the, the, the thrill of be, building something. And so. You're I addicted to the challenge. Yeah, I am. I really am. I, I mean, I, I don't like, I like the challenge. I'm very competitive. And, um. Uh, so I came down to Myrtle Beach, was going to play golf and all this stuff. And say, so I'll just retire at 50, you know. And I said, uh, not going to do that. And then people were just calling me. All these lawyers would call me and say, hey, you know, how you do this, how you do that. And I finally just said, one day, i got to start charging for this. Wow. That's how it happens. You, you start these things by accident, right? Yeah, yeah. So I started filming, started out Personal Injury Lawyers Marketing Management Association. and. Uh, and we just it kind of started out kind of halfway hobby, but also, you know, I was trying to help lawyers and I would get paid. And they, we, uh, it just kind of, you know, over the years, that time 10 years ago, it's just really grown to something big. I mean, now it's a multi-million dollar business. Mm-hmm. And we do, we do Matt now. We just started out just kind of like a little deal and a little bit of consulting. But now it's like we got a membership. We do a magazine. We have trainings. We've got, uh, you know, private webinars. We got intake t- training. We have monthly roundtables for staff, for management, and for staff for marketing. We have masterminds for the for the lawyers. We have a strategic attorney coach for the lawyers. So we kind of got it's it's turned into a very robust deal. We put on a big event. We'll have about four or five hundred lawyers come to it uh, mm-hmm. every year. We're doing it in uh, September 29th through October 2nd in New Orleans at the Ritz Carlton. And we have probably over 30 speakers and probably half of them are lawyers sharing their secrets. Uh, and I speak a couple of times, um, you know, so that's the way it got started. And, and we really, oh. uh, they actually, they, they nicknamed me the millionaire maker. The millionaire you know I mean? maker. I've, I've seen I mean, that. I mean, so many, so many lawyers, millionaires and, and I can do it. I mean, as long as they don't mind implementing, I mean, the deal is, uh, I keep them from making all the mistakes I made when I was growing mine and, and being working with, you know, hundreds of lawyers over the last 10 years, I see the mistakes that are made now on the internet. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and so the deal is you just keep learning. I mean, cause it's a change and it's sort of like, uh, you know, the internet's sort of like trying to paint a train. It's, it's always moving. It's always, it's it's always, always moving. moving. You know, so we try, we pride ourselves on being a, Cutting edge technology and, and uh, we'll always bring in, try to bring in whatever, you know, like we were, our members were the first ones to know about LSA ads before it, before Google even put it up. I had a company out of Canada that was getting our people vetted. And so all the Pilma members that got in it, first 90 days, they were killing it. And they were wow. just getting, they were just, they said, you know, when Gallery called me and said, kid, you pay for my membership for life. Just by this one deal, and that's and something. Well, you, know, you know, but it's because I know so many people, and people come to me, you know, and they know I got a big following, and, and they they want to, uh, you know, they were wanting the business. That company had a had a road uh, inroads with uh, them, and one other firm had inroads with Google, and we got in, we got all our people in first, and they killed it to start with. Now now everybody's figured it out, like everything else. Yeah, you, know, you can't never, it just take some time. Can't rest on your laws. You got to always be looking for the next thing. Now, I want to talk about one thing though. You mentioned this too, even when you were describing like how you came up, Ken. Now, a lot of their lawyers coming out of school all the time, and and they're they're taught the law, but they're not taught the business, the business side of yeah. running their firm. Do you run across that a lot, Ken? Ken? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the problem. Everybody that comes to film and start with is want more cases. But then once we get them to more cases, then they they, they hit the thing I hit. Was they don't they can't have it. They don't the have infrastructure the problem. They don't, have, they, don't have, they don't have they don't have to they don't have the processes. They don't have the system. They don't know how to hire. They don't know how to fire. They don't know how to you know um, how to uh, keep up with their KPIs and manage volume. You know, uh, and it's uh, you know that's why I have different levels of masterminds because people I got lawyers that are 
you know, under two million, two to ten million, and over ten million in revenues. Mm -hmm. And the right. guys that, and the girls that are in ten million plus, they got a whole different set of problems. Yeah, they, they, they don't have they don't have the one million dollar problems. They got the ten million dollar problems. So they need to be around the yeah. ten million dollar people. Yeah, I mean, and the deal is, you know, uh, they. They we got a big problem getting cases to do with me doing 10 million a year revenues or plus. You know, and we got some lawyers doing 25, 50 million in that mastermind. I call it the eight figure. And uh, yeah, a whole set of different problems. I mean, you know, it still talks some marketing, but it's probably 75% we spend talking about management and infrastructure and how to cut costs because you would think costs would get cheaper, but the bigger you get, everything gets more complicated, complex. And uh, you, you, you have a lot of waste. You got to really watch it. So what are some of the difficulties? Because, uh, you, you know, Ken, you just, you had a lot there I want to kind of unpack. What are some of the difficulties that people, that they come to you with? I mean, uh, like you said, the first thing they want is they want a lot of cases. Everybody's going to say, I want to get a lot of cases. I want to be in the eight-figure group, right? Is Do you hear more of the infrastructure problem? Is that what you hear more of from people that are coming in, or especially just law firms coming to you? Uh, you know, the first, well, kind of restate that because the ones that come in to start with, they want more cases, but then after they get more cases, then the big issues is, 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 is the management part of it. And, and the number one problem is hiring, the right, hiring people mm -hmm. because everybody, and then hiring the right person and having the right person doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Put them in the right seat yeah. on the book. Put them in the right bus on the right seat, and uh, and then keeping them. And so that requires training and, and, and coaching. And I had a lawyer tell me the other day, he said, well, "Why do I want to spend all that money?" And then they're going to leave. I said, well, "What happens if they stay and you don't spend that money on it?" True. And you got somebody that's not worth a damn. So the deal is, you want you've got to do this. And if you treat them right, uh, and when I say treat them right, most employees. 90% of employees do not leave because of money. They leave because uh, they don't like their supervisor. They don't feel like they're appreciated and they see no room for advancement. Number four is money. And so most lawyers don't get that. Uh, they feel like, and I used to be the same way. They feel like I pay you a fair wage. I want a fair day's work and screw all the rest of it. Uh, -uh You can't get by with that anymore. You, you've got to, and here's the deal. You want a players. And the, and the deal is, they're hard to find. Right. Because every, everyone's looking for them. But you got it. And so here's the deal. Bert Harness, the guy that wrote the Scale It Up book, and the uh, Rockefeller, have, he said he told me one day, he said, no great business, and that means great law firm too, was ever built on the back of average employees. And so I, I think part of my success was that I really hired people that were smarter than I was. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I put my ego down and it didn't bother me, you know, because I, I know what my strengths are. I mean, I, I'm a visionary. I'm good at, I like the marketing part. I, I was okay trial lawyer, but not great. And so I hired great trial lawyers. I was, I knew how to manage, but I hate managing. I'm more of a leader. And so I hired a really strong manager. So I hired people that stuff I didn't like to do, which is usually stuff you don't like to do is your weakness, right? Cause if, yeah. you, if you're really good at something, it means you really like it cause you're going to get better at it. So mm -hmm. I deal with, I teach, I teach lawyers, leverage your strengths and delegate your weaknesses and go out and hire these people. And then uh, people say, well, I can't afford it. I said, you can't afford not to. I mean, here's sure. the deal. You, I made more money when I got out of handling cases and just, and was, and I won't manage it, but I was doing leadership and working on marketing and, and, and working on mentoring my lawyers and, and having a pulse of what my clients were saying about us to make sure everything was, everybody was happy that my, that my, Staff was happy, and my employ and my my clients were happy because here's the deal: your staff's going to treat your clients the way you treat them. I promise you. I heard and, that. And you I, I, that is so true. I heard that. Uh, I was actually talking to Arnie Malham that used to own CJ Advertising, and he just said the same thing you said verbatim. Yeah. Well, he's he's a uh, he's familiar with the uh, scale it up. And he's really familiar with the uh, fact he's got a thing called the book club or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
And he was really big on uh, training and, and coaching his uh, management people, you know, when he had CJ advertising. I think he does real estate development now. I'm not sure what he's doing. I haven't talked to him in a couple of years. But I know, uh, you know, you want to help your grow your leaders. Your, your, you know, you've got to have, you need a leader. When I say a leader, I don't mean a manager. You need a leader of about every eight or nine employees in your firm. Mm-hmm. And that means somebody that's kind of is going to lead that pack, uh, and that's another big problem that lawyers have: finding leaders, and, and then or either finding people that they can train to be leaders. Because you can train it; you don't have to be born a leader. Uh, it's like you don't have to be born to be a manager. Uh, but you know, it's it's hard, and the deal is, people tend to just hire anybody off an interview, and so we really push this whole. You know, the hire slow, fire fast deal, but do the onboarding and uh, and uh, really take your time and get the right person. Because, and listen, if you got to pay, what we found is an A player would do one and a half to two and a half times more work than a B or C player. Mm-hmm. And so you can pay them 50% more. If, I, if you're paying your paralegals 50 and you can get one that's an A plus player, pay them 75. So I can't afford it. They're going to do more work than two people that you're paying 50 to. So you're getting a bargain. You know what I'm saying? They're going yeah, to. Yeah. So, I mean, really, you're coming out ahead if it truly is an A player. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I think that's the the biggest problem is is people, getting people, keeping them, training them, you know, uh, having team players. I mean, uh I read a lot of books on this stuff and talk to a lot of people. Uh, and it's not the glitzy stuff that everybody wants to talk about. Everybody wants to talk about how to get more cases. But mm-hmm. the deal is, uh, if you don't service those cases, you're not going to get referrals. And uh, that's another thing I see lawyers. They just think you can throw money at it. I always said TV made, made lawyers, back in my day, it made lawyers very lazy. And they just throw more money. At it. It's a little different now, as you know. Uh, the markets are so saturated. Uh, I mean, I got a member I was talking to, and uh, number one lawyer spending a half a million dollars a month, and then the next lawyer spending two fifty, and you got a couple more spending one hundred twenty five. Mm-hmm. Listen, when I was in Raleigh, I was spending seventy five, and I was the number a month, and I was the number two guy. Uh, now in Raleigh, the number one guy is spending two fifty a month. Uh, you know, number two guys spending 150. So things change. You know, as far but, as uh, the the marketing end of it, you know, I I want to come back to I want to come back to this though. But the marketing end of it, do you feel like it's changed a whole lot? I know it's more saturated, but you feel like the marketing has changed a whole lot then versus now, or it's still the same game but just a different time that we're playing in. It's still the same game. I mean, it's all about uh, market share and uh, brand, you know, brand awareness and all that stuff. And it depends on how you're going to go after it. But 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 the deal is, it just costs so much more to get there now. So whereas I used to be able to get cases on TV for three to five hundred dollars a pop back in the nineties, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know any lawyer that's getting them for less than a thousand, fifteen hundred. Most of them two or three thousand. Depends on the market. Depends on how how, and that might be okay if your average fee is twenty thousand. But back then, my average fee was six seven thousand, and so I, I really didn't want to spend over a thousand dollars a case. Uh, you know, and uh, of course, a lot of lawyers already know what they're getting because they don't keep up with their with their metrics. But I think mm-hmm. I think the big deal now is you got to be data driven a lot more than you did back twenty years ago when I was doing this stuff. It's yeah, you have access uh, to more data. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what we're doing at Pilma. I told them this was the, we're data driven. This from now out, we, we look at like 20 different KPIs every Tuesday on our social media engagement, on our website. I mean, we're looking at it, LinkedIn, everything, Instagram, Twitter. We, we're mm-hmm. looking at everything. We know how much engagement, how many followers, how many likes. Uh, we're looking at our emails, how many times, how many, what percentage gets open. We're looking at our click-through rate on our ads. You know, you've got yeah. to look at all this stuff now. You just can't throw the money out there and say, "Well, you know, you got to know, you got to spend your money wisely." Because this, especially in the PI industry, I mean, it's just so daggone competitive, man. I mean, it really is competitive. 
Oh yeah. Ken, I want to, I want us to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and I want to talk about the money, spending the money, like what you just talked about and not throwing it against a wall. And I want you to be able to show these folks some of your expertise on when it comes to KPIs. This is the AdCast. Today's show is sponsored in part by Craft Creative. Change your creative, change your world with premium video production and graphic design. Get started by visiting WeCraftCreative.com. You don't need a marketing agency. You do deserve very important placement. VIP Marketing and Advertising is a cutting-edge strategic digital, creative, media, and marketing partner that provides services for businesses of all sizes. To stay up to date on the latest marketing news, subscribe for email updates at veryimportantplacement.com. All right, so I'm back. I'm back with my guest here, Mr. Ken Hardison. Ken, we were just talking about the money, spending the money. Um, I, I remember going back to one of the episodes when I had one of the attorneys here from another law firm, and he said to compete, you have to spend the money. So let's talk about that because there's a there's probably going to be a lot of law firms and they're going they're looking for for information and they're wondering like, okay, what do I do? And I and I think that's the hardest part for these folks, Ken. What's important for them to do now? You said keeping up with metrics, but how would you advise attorney now when it comes to marketing? Yeah. Well, see, I always tell people the first thing is you've got to create your different. You've got to create something that stands you out from the crowd because that's going to be the basis. Of I mean, everybody says the same thing. You know, we care, we're tough, you know, uh, 80 years experience. And when somebody's trying to choose a lawyer, they hear the same damn thing over and over. How are they going to make yeah. a choice? It's like if all the doctors say, "Yeah, we'll take your kid now. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we care. We'll be safe. We, we'll be, you know, we get them out." Uh, how, how do you know who to pick? You know, right? And so you, I, that's where everybody, and it's the hardest thing to do because everybody says, "Well, we all do the same thing." Well, let me give you an example, and this okay. and, and this really worked. Uh, there's a book called about unique uh, selling proposition. Some people call it the differentiator. So anyway, I did went through this process and I come up with uh, a 100% client service satisfaction guarantee. You know, and this is the way I, I framed it. Uh, you know, I said, uh, no lawyer can guarantee you results and neither can we, but we can and we do guarantee you this. And if you're not completely satisfied with the way we treat you in your case, the first 30 days, come get your file, no fees, no cost. That's our 100% client satisfaction guarantee from us to you. Wow. Let me tell you, Kate, same ad spend, 23% up in cases. That's the only thing I changed was my message. Now, now, now here's the deal. Every lawyer in the town, so that was crazy. He said, man, you can have these people coming in here. I said, listen, they can fire us after 30 days anyway and we get quality merit. How much is that? A couple hundred bucks because you're just right. getting the file fit up. And so I had in seven years, I did that like 2003. It, the last seven years before I sold out, I had two people ask for the files back. And my intakes went up 23%. Yeah. Oh, you won. And I was, you know, so, you know, I was signing up an extra... 35 to 40 cases a month and I lost two in, in two years, in seven years. So figure that out. 2,800 mm -hmm. cases times $6,000. You figure it out. I don't know what it is. A lot of, a lot of millions. That's, that's, but, a, but see, that's, that's a lot. That's, 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 but that's, that's the first thing. And then, and then the deal is you got to get your message and be consistent with it. And, and, uh, and everything's got to look the same, you know, because you, you, like you say, you're trying to do that branding. But then I think here's the big deal. If you're starting out, you got to start out, you know, if you don't have the money. Uh, and listen, I did this. I took a, a guy I told me at one of my conferences uh, around 2012. Well, listen, I don't have, I can't get a half a million dollar line of credit. I said, well, you can do it off of that. And he said, I just don't think you can. So I started a social security practice down here in South Carolina just off of that to prove it. And I only spent $6,000 a month on marketing. And I grew it in two years. There's like 700 something cases. 
And that was my budget, 6000 a month. And uh, had to do a lot. And I bought ads and I did an infomercial and I did, I did, I did things outside that, you know, I went, I had my books. And I was taking my doctor's offices and psychiatrist's offices and pain clinics. You were doing some they guerrilla marketing too, man. I was doing a lot of guerrilla marketing, you know. I did a lot of videos. Um, and and that's what you need to do. But, but, but I guess the biggest deal I see with lawyers is they don't pay attention to their past clients. They'd rather take money and spend it on trying to get somebody that doesn't know who they are, never used them before, to convince them to hire them versus taking somebody that you've done a job for and hopefully they, you did a good job and they love you to get them to send you more clients. And they have no systematic approach other than, hey, you know, send us a client. But, but at Pilma, I teach systematic. There's 15 different ways to create different systems to get people mm-hmm. to refer you cases. And what I found is they're the best cases. Uh, and it's all about, you know, my deal is, 20% of people never give you a referral, no matter if you got them 10 zillion dollars, and 20% of the people will give you a referral, no matter anything, you even got to ask them, they just love you. But there's 60% that would, if they knew how to do it, if you made it easy for them. And so the deal is you got to figure out how to make it easy for them. And uh, I teach you how to do that with different, with, uh, different. Yeah. like I said, there's 15 different ways, but it's all about mindset. And get, I mean, you would not believe we were spending Eric, close to $2 million a year on advertising, but mm. still 42% of our cases came from referrals from old clients when I had referrals. Oh. That, that's, people don't really realize that. They say, well, that's not a big deal. It's not a big deal if you won't spend it $2 million. So the big, you know, one of the big you know things is, yo, yeah. One of the big things is if you're going to spend the money, you got to know what's bringing in the money. Yeah, you got to track it. I mean, you know, and it's hard. And I, I get in arguments with lawyers, and I understand this. When you get to so big, when you're on TV, radio, billboards, you know, they say, well, there's just no way of tracking. And, and they're right to a certain extent. But when you're starting out, you know, I used to, I know guys that spend millions and millions, and they might have a certain vanity number or whatever, but they will run, they're trying to figure out which ad to work, and they'll run. They'll change the numbers on each ad and have a different number, then bring them in and for a month and see how they uh, see how they do, see how they uh, what the response is on that ad because they got a different mm-hmm. number, right? Uh, and this, and I can't tell who it is because it's confidential, but this is guy that's probably spending fifteen twenty million dollars a year on TV in the United wow. States lawyer, and he does that every year. But you know, and then there's easy ways to do it on with Google, I mean, analytics and, uh, and doing numbers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I used to have a deal, even in the old days, I, I had to ask two questions. How'd you hear about us? But then the second question was more important because we didn't have internet back then or very little bit. What were you looking at when you dialed the number? That told me more mm. than what did you hear about it. Uh, you, you know, Ken, I saying? never asked that one before. I never asked but that one before. Tell- and then, you know, and I could argue, that, well, but they might have saw, they might be looking at the internet, but then they saw me on TV. And that's true, too. But but what was it that triggered you? What was it that triggered you to make that call? And, uh, you know, the reason I did that was I had a, I pulled out a Yellow Pages in 2006. I was spending 600000 and I pulled it all out yep. in one year. Went to 30000 and put it on TV and internet. Uh and, uh, and they had the big hoss come down to see me from Bell South. I mean, I was spending just a quarter million with Bell South, you know, in Raleigh. And, uh, and he pissed me off. And he says, oh, but they all go to look at that. You know, they might see you on TV, but they go to the yellow pages and look it up. <laughs> I, I said, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> so I, I got every LA take. I said, you ask them exactly what that. And if they say, they say the phone book, I say, you ask them, is it yellow pages or white pages? It was, it was 80% of the time it's white pages. Wow, and and that's when I and I proved him wrong, and then he shut up, and I got out of it, and I took that money, and I was getting cases off the yellow pages, but they went from cost to me. I, I knew what my cost was. Yeah, when I started the yellow pages were three hundred dollars. When I got out of the yellow pages, they were twenty six hundred dollars a case, and, and that just didn't make mm-hmm. sense for me uh, because I, my average fee was around six seven thousand. And my rule of law, and I and I, I don't get it from no book. This is just Ken Harrison's rule. I want six to one. If I spend 
if I spend, uh, if my average fee is 6000 I can't spend over $1,000 for a case. I've got to figure out a way to get it under 1000 now, it more, you know, makes it more profitable. Makes your case more profitable for you. It, for yeah. You. Somebody say, "Oh, if I can triple my money, I'm good." I think you break it even when you triple your money, because mm-hmm. you got all the overhead. You got your cost and your marketing. You got you got all your overhead of putting the case. You, you it, it costs money to run a business. So, you so got all the help. So when people are members of Pilma, are they going through all these things? Are they learning all of these practices from you? Because Ken, the stuff that yeah, you're saying absolutely. right now. The stuff you're yeah. saying, they are not going to get that in law school. When they get out of law school, it's like, yeah. hey, here's your degree. Go get a shingle and, and good luck to you. But, you know, yeah. and sometimes yeah, they vault. stay with it and sometimes they don't. We got a member vault that is just full of, uh, I've, I've done probably, Eric, probably over 100 PowerPoint presentations on different things. And I've, I've taken the best ones and put them in the vault. And they're on everything, uh, referrals, mm-hmm. uh, intakes. Uh, tracking uh, KPIs. I mean, knowing what you, you know. Uh, it's just so many different things, and I mean, you know, and I've got them in there, you know, and then um, articles from my magazines, you know. I mean, and I've got a podcast I do. It's called Grow Your Law Firm, and I need to get you on it. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. Love, definitely love yeah, to do that for you. Get, for you. We need to get you on that. But no, uh, here's the deal. It's like anything else. The lawyers that come into Pilma and implement at least a quarter of what we teach them, they grow. In fact, you know, we're the only company out there. There's some, you know, I got competition in the world. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. companies out there, and most of them, there's one that's a lawyer, but most of them are even lawyers. Never been there, never done that. But I'm the only one that says if you don't, if you join Pilma, you don't grow your practice the first year 25 percent, then you get it for free. For another whole year, or until you get twenty five percent growth. Well, that's a that's a yeah, heck of, that's a heck of a guarantee there. Nobody guarantees it. Yeah. And I also give them a ninety day guarantee, a hundred percent money in their money back if they get in and say, mm-hmm. "Oh, this is just not a good fit for me." I write them a check back. I do that on every event I do. I do that on the masterminds. I'm the only guy out there that guarantee. You know why? Because I don't want their money if I'm not helping them. Because right. I don't. I'm. A, I did all right when I sold a law firm. I'm not rich. I mean, I live. I, it don't take a lot for me. I, I don't. I don't need a. I don't need a hundred foot yacht. I don't need a seven thirty seven. I do this because I love doing it. As you can tell, I get excited when I talk about it. You can tell when I get excited. When I talking about it. <laughs> no, you know, keep I going. I talk, I talk real slow most of the time, uh, but when I start talking about marketing stuff, I get excited about it because I, I just love it. I mean, you know, I love. I love to watch. And I love to help lawyers grow it. I mean, it's like uh, sort of like having grandchildren. You get to play with them, but you don't have to friggin' live with them the whole. You know what I'm saying I don't yeah. have to deal with all. You, the you can always you can that. always pass them back whenever you're done with them. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like this. <laughs> I can give you all the all the tools and everything, but I ain't got to sit there and worry about whether we're gonna make payroll next week. You know, I, I, went, I went through those days. Hey, listen, it's, it's tough business. I mean, you know, it wasn't all rosy for me. We had our we had our dip. So how about law firms that have partners? Do you find, I mean, cause even, even you, you went out on your own. Uh, when you, do you yeah. advise younger firms to kind of stay away from the partnership? How, tell, tell me about law Absolutely. firms with partners. Yeah. 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 I, I tell all my members never have an equity partner. Mm-hmm. You can have a non equity partner where they share in the profits. But when you get ready, you got the kid only. Here's what I see. I don't know if you've seen this. When you get with lawyers, when you got five or six partners, it takes them frigging forever to get anything decided on. They have to have a meeting. That, what temperature are we going to keep it this week? 68 or 71? Uh, I just can't deal with it. And, and you know, and, uh, and I think there can only be one leader. You got to put somebody in charge. I mean, hell, you can't. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Nothing gets done, I think. Uh, and plus, I went through a bad breakup in 2005, and I said after that, I would never have another partner, not equity. Mm-hmm. And the guy I sold out to, uh, uh, Ben Cochran, I told him, and you know, I said, these guys are great, but just give them all the money they want, but just don't make them part. I said, because they can really just – well, somebody's got to make decisions. You know, I, I always call myself a benevolent dictator. The deal was I listen to everybody, and I, and I and I think I got a pretty my ego, and I'm not arrogant. 
But the deal is somebody got to make a damn decision. And, yeah. and the only way you can grow something fast is you got to make some decisions. And, right. and, and the deal, that's what, that's what your vendors want. That's what your employees want. That's what your clients want. They want, even if you're wrong, they still admire you for making a damn decision. I, I hate people that hem haul around and take forever to make a decision. Damn it. Let's do it. You know, the deal is, if it takes you that long, then you don't even need to do it to start with. Just don't even do it. I mean, the, the deal is just, you know, I mean, calculated risks, you got to take them, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to make any big money. Ken, do you, just th- the do you think, uh, you know, we talked about how, how, how much marketing has changed and, and, and now you hear digital, digital comes up in the conversation a heck of a lot more than traditional does. But that's like yeah. the wild, wild west. Do you advise some lawyers to really learn and understand exactly what they're paying for in digital? Because you know, if you get if you get an agency that's not very you know authentic and transparent, they can rob you blind when it comes to the digital stuff. I mean, do you advise your Pillman members learn this digital stuff? Yep, yeah. or either get somebody. Yeah, yeah, learn it because you're right. It's, it's crazy. And I just like, uh, I, you know, it's coming. I mean, some people say we're there. I'm not sold on the whole digital deal yet. I mean, I know it works mm-hmm. some, but like you say, there's so many, we're not quite there yet. I mean, another five, 10 years. Yeah. I think video. Yeah. Video is a big deal, but you got YouTube, mm-hmm. you got YouTube ads and, Facebook and, um, but here's the deal. I mean, and this is the truth. It's like uh, lawyers just don't work. The, 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 I don't know if it's too lazy or you don't know how, but they just will not do the guerrilla marketing, the, the, the grassroots marketing. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I'm pushing a lot of my, even, I mean, I've got a bunch of guys spending loads of money and they're still going after it because they, they always want to be a, you know, that slight edge and they're, they're going to do it anyway. So, I mean, yeah. the deal is if they're doing it, which they never used to do it because they just throw more money on TV and they would do it. But now you hit a saturation point where you get more cases, but it's a diminishing return. I know you've seen that. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think I, I really checked on that too. When I mean, I really tested that when I was in Raleigh. I mean, my sweet spot was around 78,000 a month back in the 90s and, and early 2000s. I could get more cases, but they cost me more. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I could spend a hundred, and I would get more cases, but those those last, they would cost me more because uh, you know just more. You know, you know the answer to that better than I do, but I just know they cost me more. I, I think you know some law firms they don't know how to determine their budget. They determine their budget based on what what Cantar is saying or what the other guy is spending. You know. So the other guy is spending two fifty. They're going to say, "Well, you know, we need to be the number one spender, so we need to be at two seventy five or or three hundred. You know, um, so how do you how would you tell a law firm this is how you should determine your budgets? Because Ken Ken's got the six to one rule. How would you tell them how to set up their budgets for total marketing? marketing. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, uh, everybody always says, "What percentage?" Are you- of your gross, and I say that's the wrong question. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody says, "Well, you spend 10, 15, 20. I said that's the wrong question. The question is, how many cases do you want? And if you know, if you go your numbers, if you know your KPIs, if you know that doing the internet, I can get every thousand dollars, I get a case, and I know with TV every fifteen hundred, I get a case, and I know that Facebook, I ever twelve hundred, I get a case, and I know that you know this every four hundred dollars." Then I can sit there and just say, okay, if I know those numbers, then I can say, I want to sign up 60 cases and I know I can't get them all off the TV. So I'm going to spend this much and I'm going to get this many and then I'm going to get this many. And then and then maybe you tweak your message and maybe like when I did, I went up 22%. Maybe you can right. do that. But the deal is I want to look at, my question is how many cases do you want and can you afford to spend the money? I mean, you know, that, that's the question. I mean, it really comes down to that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've had years where I spent 10% of my gross the previous year, and I've had years where I spent 25, 30%. Depending on what. What cases you want? Yeah. I mean, like one year I wanted to slow down, and, and, and I could, 
I was keeping up with my numbers, and I said, I'm closing the, I'm closing 150, but I'm signing up 200, so I'm adding 50 every month. And my mm-hmm. God, you know, I got to have more staff. I ain't got room. I got to get new lawyers in here. It's hard yeah. to find lawyers. So I had to slow it down a little bit and get me get my infrastructure built back up before I turn back on the faucet. So uh, yeah. some, some of the big things I heard you say today, people, got to have good people and got to have a good infrastructure. Those are some of the things I heard you talk about today. And I want yeah, I want to yeah. make sure people listen and pay attention to, to some of those things that you said. Um, this year, well, not this year now, but in 2020, we went through something that we've never seen before, right? And that was COVID-19. And so it, it changed a lot of businesses, yours, mine, um, it, it, you know, and, and for some of the personal injury lawyers, for those guys, they're relying on traffic. And at some point when people were quarantined, there was no traffic. Um, right. So how how did you coach your members during this time, and, and what are some of the things that you saw uh, during this yeah. difficult time? Difficult time. Well, it was two trains of thoughts. Some of it was the back off, and some of it was the double up. Uh, but what I tried to do is get them to either uh, cut some of their TV budget, or either keep the same budget but tell them you want twice as many ads. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people pull it, and, and a lot of them went with getting to twice as many ads, and so they got double exposure. And while some of their competition was pulling back, so they didn't hurt as bad. They still hurt. I mean, it still yeah. was down, but not as bad. And then the other deal I did, and uh, I told them, I said, go back and look the last six months of everybody that you wanted to sign with your firm that didn't sign, and write them a note. And make sure just ask them how they're doing with COVID, and if there's anything you can do to help them. And send that out to everybody. And some of them sent just form letters. Some of them did handwritten. The ones that did handwritten were signing up thirty percent of those cases. Wow. And so they, they were going back and getting these cases. That uh, and then I told them, I said, take this time to call, get all your lawyers and you two to pick up the phone and call every client you got and just see how they're doing and don't with COVID and see if everything's okay with them. I said, show some real concern. And when they did that, they would get some referrals, believe it or not. Yeah, you know what I've been thinking about? My cousin got in the ring and I was telling him, but you know, I need to get, what's the best yeah. number? And so they were doing that. So they were doing a lot of that touching and, and making them relationships uh, and then following up on leads that they'd probably, when everything's going good, they don't worry about it. But they it should be. be. No, no, you're right. What amazed me, though, Ken, is is how much of a lack of strategy some attorneys had. And, and here's what yeah. I mean by that. When people were quarantined in the beginning of March and things were shutting down, why not send them a direct mail because you know they're home? <laughs> yeah. You know, it was the yeah. one it was the one time that everyone was home and you can catch them and they have nothing yeah, else to do them. except read the mail. Why not send them something then, right? Yeah, and call them too. Because they're there. Yeah. yeah, I mean I yeah, I mean, you know, the ones that did it, it helped them. I mean but listen, still what I saw from our members was uh believe it or not, their incomes I had some of them had the best years ever. Yeah. Where they were working were the intakes or new cases. And what I saw overall is we had a probably people were down. And it was different plate, but over the year in, I talked to a lot of our masterminds and they were down about 20, 22% mm-hmm. from their side. Yeah, I've been hearing that. Board. That's kind of the norm. That's what I've been hearing. I've been yeah. hearing that same thing. It's, it's yeah. everything hurt them. Uh, it wasn't like, you know, when COVID hit and the shutdown happened in March, April, May, it wasn't like they were losing deposits because what hurt them was down the road, you know, when you get to yeah. November, you don't have those deposits coming in because, yeah. Yeah. you know, let's just say if yeah. it takes about six months to settle a case and all, uh, that's really yeah. where they were hurt, you know. Um, yeah. and I, and I, told them, I told them to take that PPP money and we're going to put it in a CD and hold it back. Or we're going to put it somewhere safe because cause you ain't gonna, you're good now, but you're going to need it 12 yeah. months now because that, the cases that you got, you're going to be down 20% in case in revenue. Right. You know, right. over, you know, and so that's what you, that's when you're going to need that money. Don't go blow it now. No, that's great that advice. My, that was my advice. That great, was my great advice. advice. Great advice. Yeah. Great advice. Uh, we're going to take our final break, and, and what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go into something called a lightning round. 
All right. I hear that lightning going off there, Ken. So when we come back with a lightning round, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give you five million imaginary dollars, Ken. Five million imaginary dollars. And I want the people to know exactly how Ken Hardison is going to spend this five million dollars that I'm going to give him. Okay. Has it got to be on law? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be on law. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. This is the iCast. <laughs> You don't need a marketing agency. You do deserve very important placement. VIP Marketing and Advertising is a cutting-edge strategic digital, creative, media, and marketing partner that provides services for businesses of all sizes. To stay up to date on the latest marketing news, subscribe for email updates at veryimportantplacement.com. You're listening to The Adcast, the podcast for marketers and advertisers with your host, Eric Elliott. All right, I am back with Mr. Ken Hardison. We've been just having a good time here, man. And uh, I will tell you, there's a lot of experience inside that man's dome when it comes to marketing and managing a law firm. Um, and right before the break, Ken, I told you I'm going to give you five million digital dollars, digital imaginary dollars, and you got to spend it on the law firm, Ken. <laughs> so, um, Terry, let, if, let's let's do this. Uh, You'll be surprised. All right, you ready? Uh, I'm going to put you on a spot here, Ken, and show you show some of that expertise. So I'm going to set a clock for about 60 seconds. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to spend 5 million digital imaginary dollars, right? And you have to spend this $5 million to market a law firm. You ready? Tell me when you're ready, Ken. When you're ready, I'm going to hit the clock. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. All right. Go. Go. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is spend some money to figure out, get me a logo and a, and a slogan and a unique selling proposition. Probably could do that for less than $30,000 tops, maybe $3,000. Uh, then I'm going to go find somebody that really knows how to buy TV and somebody that's creative, somebody like you, to figure out and work with me. And then I want to look at what the TV markets are, and I'm going to try to be in the top three. And uh, – and I'm going to go get, get the best person I can find to do my SEO for me. And I'm also going to play with some PPC and uh, LSA ads. I want to get all I can get on that, those two. And I'm going to be really, really watching how I spend that money. Ten seconds left, Ken. Uh, okay. Then the rest of it I'm going to put uh, in, in guerrilla marketing, believe it or not. There you go. Uh, I'm not going to do it digital. You know, I'll be honest with you. I'd put it on that some social media, and that's it. I, I really would be working my 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 back. I, you know, like George Saint, he sends out eighty thousand Christmas cards every year. Yeah, that costs a lot of money. But, yeah, but he's he's done all right for himself, hasn't he? Yeah, working that core. I think, I think he's done just fine. Yeah, he's working I mean, that I remember, core. I remember when he joined Pilma, he had eight lawyers, and listen, we didn't. George did this itself and got good people like you, but you know, now he's got what, 50 lawyers. I mean, he knows he's, he's done very well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. He, um, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a smart one. Um, uh, he compliments you as much as you compliment him. Um, and, and I think, uh, Pilma was, Pilma was, uh, was really good for that firm. And, uh, and, uh, I've, I've gotten to witness it before. I've been at one of your events before in the top of last year, you know, um, down in Key West and, and got to, you know, talk to some of your members. And I think Vern Harnish was there. We got to see Vern Harnish, but, um, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was, it was really, really good. It was, uh, the members were very involved and I got to see, I wasn't the attorney and I got to see all the value that was around in that room. So the one thing that I would, you know, wouldn't want is for those who are seeking knowledge or information, not to know exactly what you provide and what you can give them and your Pilma group. Yeah. So kudos to you. Let's give Ken a round of applause for starting Pilma. Let's give him a round of applause. So good for you, Ken. Awesome. So, uh, Ken, we're going to finish out this lightning round and I want to ask you about different media. Okay. So, uh, there's no right or wrong answer. I'll ask you about what you think about digital or TV or radio. And you just tell me your thoughts, the pros and cons. Okay. You ready? Yep. All right, Ken, the first media, Newspaper. Uh, 
dead unless they're over 60 years old. I wouldn't use it. Radio. Uh, only if you can get a endorsement from the, from the star of that station. Television. Uh, only, yeah, if you can be in the top three or four or if you've got some niche. Yeah. Outdoor. Uh, never do it standalone, only if you're doing radio and TV. I like that. Make sure it's supplemental, right? Yes. Direct mail. Uh, all you can do. I, I used to send out, uh, well, it say a lot of direct mail. I think you need to touch your people, and I think in states that allow it where you can do it, it's it's a it's a no brainer. When we had it, we we were sending out over a thousand pieces a day. Cable. Uh, depends. Uh, I think it's like radio with uh, pictures. I mean, it's really if only time I ever run it was like for mass torch or to hit some specific demographic. Social uh, social media. Uh, it's like a newsletter, as far as I'm concerned. It's just it's just brand awareness. I, I don't see you. other than for mass tours. I don't see it working for car wrecks. Out of social media, which uh, would you say is your favorite platform and why? Uh, Facebook, because I think it's sort of like a newsletter. It's just top of mind awareness, and you can be authentic. I, I think. Not for ads, but just for just for brand, just just being on there, let people know what you're doing. It's it's just top of mind awareness. I, I don't like direct direct ads on Facebook. I really don't. Google ads. So very saturated right now. I, I think if you watch your KPIs, it can be you got to get somebody who really knows what they're doing. Don't try to do it by yourself. You 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 waste a lot of money. You know, that negative, the negative words are more important than the, the key words. Uh, you know, get somebody that's what they're doing and really be on top of it. Because it, it, uh, if you do do it, you know, uh, stay with it. And, and I see lawyers go in it and pull out, in it, pull out, and it really has cost them a lot of money. Mm. And YouTube. I see that as the biggest uh, opportunity in the next two years. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. I really do. I mean, we're pushing it hard at the summit, and we got a lot of got a lot of interesting things we're working on right now at Pilma. Awesome. So, uh, Ken, you've been a fantastic guest, fantastic guest today, and I, I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Thank um, you, my friend. I want to all of our listeners want to thank our guest, Ken Hardison and Ken, uh, tell us what's next for you. What's next for Pilma and, and make sure you tell people how to get in touch with you. Okay. Uh, well, we have two events every year. We're going to have a virtual event in April 22nd, 23rd. We call it the lawyer internet domination Boot Camp. It's two days. We have, uh, whatever is the latest updates on Google and, uh, LSA lads and, uh, just what the newest, like we want to be talking about videos too and YouTube. Yep. Cause I really think mm-hmm. that's, that's the big deal. Uh, then in September 29th down in New Orleans, we're going to do a live event, Lord willing. Uh, and it's three days and we'll have four or 500 lawyers there. We'll have like over 50 vendors there. We'll have, uh, over 30 speakers, different presentations on marketing management. And, uh, plus you were, Two blocks from Bourbon Street. <laughs> uh, Two blocks from Bourbon Street. We also have the Strategic Attorney Coach, which is a group coaching, plus some one-on-one coaching with me. Uh, starts in March, when that's a year-long program. Uh, uh, masterminds will be meeting in March, and we do. We got four different mastermind groups. And you, you've been to one of them. Uh, I, I really think the masterminds, I believe so much mm-hmm. in masterminds, Eric. I, uh, I probably spend thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year out of my pocket being in other masterminds that got nothing to do with law. It's it's marketers or entrepreneurs, and because I just believe you learn by being around others. What what your mother tell you? You are the five people you hang around. I like to hang around with people that are 
that, that are visionaries and, and hungry like me and, and are go. looking for the next deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know so what? Well, I, had, I had an uncle. He used to say, even when you're not hungry, you still have to eat. So, yeah. uh, and, and even when you, uh, even when you think you know it all, you still have to learn, you know, I mean, oh, you never, still have to if learn. You ever, if you ever learn. think you know it all, you're in trouble. There you go. If you're the smartest man in the room, you're in trouble too. <laughs> That's you right. Be, uh, you, you don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. You can't learn nothing, yeah. right? That's right. That's right. So I want to thank everyone for listening to the ad cast. I want to thank you for giving us your most valuable asset, your time. If you feel this podcast has been a help to you or could be a help to others, don't forget to subscribe, like us and share us. We are, we are everywhere. We're on, we're on, I we're on iTunes. We're on Spotify, Apple music, Stitcher, uh, and also on YouTube. And we talked about that. Ken, Ken, give us that phone number and that website so people can find you. So Pilma.org. P is in Paul, I is in ice, L is in love, M is in man, M is in man, A is in apple, dot O-R-G. And the phone number is 1-800-497-1890. Awesome. We'll make sure we put that in the show notes online. Uh, to catch up on the podcast and past episodes, go to heyameric.com or just text me at 843-297-4853. All right, this has been the AdCast. Ken, thank you for being an amazing guest. Have an awesome day. All right, thank you. Thank you, bro. Today's show is sponsored in part by Craft Creative. Change your creative. Change your world with premium video production and graphic design. Get started by visiting WeCraftCreative.com. You don't need a marketing agency. You do deserve very important placement. VIP Marketing and Advertising is a cutting-edge strategic digital, creative, media, and marketing partner that provides services for businesses of all sizes. To stay up to date on the latest marketing news, subscribe for email updates at veryimportantplacement.com. If you feel this podcast has been a help to you or could be a help to others, please don't forget to subscribe. You can listen to our podcast anywhere, iHeart, Spotify, Apple Music, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And this episode is also going to be available on YouTube. To catch up on past episodes, go to heyimeric.com, or you can always text me at 843-483-1555. Copyright VIP Marketing and Advertising, produced by Craft Creative. For premium video production and graphic design, visit wecraftcreative.com.